Welcome back, this is The Clay Golem. Uh, in this video, I want to do something slightly different. And so one of the challenges that I have as a DM, um, I guess you probably do as well, is the party taking long rests and camping out in unexpected places. So they don't always head back to the village um, and go back to the nice cozy inn. They tend to camp in the wilderness, in caves, in on beaches, rocky mountains, all sorts of places. So what I want to do as part of our Foundry series is I want to create a folder of scenes that contain a range of different potential campsite locations. Uh, that means whenever they say, oh right, we're going to camp here, instead of having a panic and going, oh, I've got nothing to show them, I can immediately go to an appropriate map, bring that up, chuck their tokens on, excellent. If there happens to be a random encounter overnight or a planned encounter overnight, I've already got a battle map up. What I don't want is to do that through theatre of the mind and then when there's a random encounter go, ha ha, bring up a battle map because it kind of gives it away a little bit. <laughs> so I'd rather have the battle map up anyway um, and that just becomes the norm uh, and it does mean that surprise encounters overnight or when they're camping become a bit more of a surprise. So in this video, we're going to look at one of the map making tools that's available. We're going to be looking at the free version. And if you haven't guessed it by what you can see on the screen, we're going to be looking at Incarnate. So um, you can just go to Incarnate. You can Google it. So it's I-N-K-A-R-N-A-T-E dot com. Uh, you need to sign in, create yourself an account. You can do that, link it for your Google account or whatever if you want to do that instead. Um, and it brings you into... Uh, the main carnate screen now there's loads of there's a question mark over here with help and there's loads of um, faqs uh, and all sorts of things here and there is a paid version of this now i'm going to be using the free version um, we've paid out for foundry as it is um, i don't want to be spending loads of money on tools and of course i could just be googling maps that other people have produced um, and are available to share so you know creative commons license they're happy for people to use them most people publish their maps on the basis of they want people to use them um, but we're going to create a new one you can see i've had a little bit of play here um, just done a forest clearing one just to uh, do the very very basic tools but there's quite uh, quite a lot in this and i am not artistic in any way shape or form so i'm going to go to create a new map up here uh, and as you can see there are some options here of the types of maps i want to do so fantasy battle maps which is free there's a fantasy battle maps which is a pro version has a lot more assets so again a pro version you pay for we've got watercolor cities um, watercolor battle maps uh, fantasy region again that's free these are hd ones um, fantasy world free uh, and of course there's pro versions for each of those let's um let's have a look at the fantasy regional hd free let's have a look at this uh, so as you can see again there are different sizes we can do but there is a free one here so we're going to use the free one obviously and it's just going to take a few moments and da -da, it brings up our map screen now <laughs> There's a number of different tools that we can use here down the left hand side. So we've got mask tools, brush tools, uh, we've got stamp tools, Let's see we've got mountains and things, we've got text tools, uh, path tools as you can see if we click on that that pops up and says hang on a minute that's going to cost you. Uh, note tools, uh, grid tools and filter tools. So we've got lots of different things we can use. Now I want to start with brush tools. Uh, we have background and foreground so I'm going to start with background and any of these I've got colors which are locked behind uh, paywall which is fine people have put lots of effort into making this but under texture I can click on this and it's open catalog and you can see so any of these that have got a star next to them are part of the pro series so there's loads of them loads here uh, any that's under core are free of charge now I have uh, grass meadow fields, grass dry green, golden fields, dirty moss. Let's start with meadow field. So I can just click on this brush. I can change the size of this brush, um, its opacity and how soft it is. But I literally can just 
go over that. I'm not doing a water scene for this. And I can change my entire background. Ta -da! It's just one big field now. Um, what I might want to do is add some other patches on. A bit of a clearing in here. Now I know it looks a bit weird at the moment. It's like I'm not artistic at all. Really, really not. Uh, but we can shove some other terrain in there if we want to. Um, we can just dot some patches of other stuff in. I'm going to be a little bit careful not to make it look too circular. I can go back to any of the others and just stamp a little bit over the top there. So soften those edges up a bit. It's just one simple little click. And you can see we're starting to generate some terrain. Now, it's never going to be brilliant with me doing it. It's just not. It's just not. <laughs> uh, what's this one? We haven't looked at dirt dry, moss dry. Let's... Uh, yeah, that's fine. Okay, so again, it, it's a battle map. Does it need to be perfect? No. Are we going to put it on exhibition? No. Let's just do something... Uh, that's going to work for us. So we've got some desert stuff here. We've got rocky ground and all those sorts of things. Okay, that's great. Thank you very much. Um, going to do so. Right, I've just clicked in the cross in the top right corner to close that without uh, selecting anything else. Okay, so we've got some basics that we can use here. But it's the stamp tool that starts to really bring in. So again, remember that we selected for the regional map thing. Again, if I click on the picture, it will open this up and I've got a whole range of different things I can pop on here. So, pine trees. And what I really like is as I'm putting down these pine trees, notice they're different. So up here, there's a total of seven of them and I've got random stamps automatically ticked. So as I'm doing this, it's randomizing from those which tree I'm using at any one given time. Okay, so what else could we do here? Uh, we could do these small mountains, and again, notice the way it's randomizing. If I just hold down and drag, it's giving me a mountain range. I could select these larger mountains, put a couple of those in here. Um, we've got stone bridges that we can put over rivers. got villages we can slap a village down here to show that's where a village is windmill now obviously these aren't particularly well to scale but having said that let's choose uh, let's choose a campfire that's going to be enormous compared to our villages but as soon as I do that if I go on the left hand side here and go to select tool I can change the size of these so I can shrink those down to make them a little bit more representative of you know <laughs> make it fit in a bit better so I might put the windmill over here it's a little way out from the village um, it's just a little farm out this way or something like that that I could do okay anything else I would like to do for this particular map I'm just playing here obviously um, uh, what about what about some water now we've got deep sea green, shallow sea green, tropical, and then we've got snow. Well, we haven't got access to these normal water ones. But we can certainly draw in, slightly larger, we can certainly draw in uh, rivers and things in here if we wanted to. Yeah, yeah, I told you I'm not artistic, shush. There are better ways to do this. There's at least four artists watching this right now who are screaming at my incompetence. Anyway, you get the point. <laughs> Sitting watching me just be an absolute muppet. Um, but you get the point. You could throw this together. And it's they're really nice graphics and things like that. They really do kind of help stand out. Now, I don't want a regional map. So why am I doing all of this? I'm just showing you some of the tools. That's all I'm doing. Now my challenge is going to be, how do I, I can return to my maps. Uh, you have unsafe changes. If you leave, you will lose them. I do want to leave. I'm not keeping that rubbish. Okay, I'm gonna create a new map. Um, 
let's have a look at the watercolor cities one because each of these sections have a different stamps and different background things so just because you're going to oh i'm going to do a city that might not necessarily be the best one for you so we've got this gray background here uh, let's have a look at what textures we've got available so here we've got light green water streets stones dark blue water grass simple dark let's put some grass out let's make that bigger so we could go with this style and we could say we're going to use this style that's going to be our background um, we've got sand we've got some dirt things okay not going to worry about those uh, what about stamps because this is what we're interested in for this one so again look at look how many stamps there are look at them there's hundreds of them but a lot of these are got all these stars next to them so you need to pay for those which is fine not a problem um, but we've got these core ones so we've got trees we can put out and again it's randomly choosing from that collection of trees I've got big leaves whatever that means um, we've got an in so we can rotate that in we can make it bigger smaller whatever we want to do okay so we can plan out a village like this green hill composites oh I see right okay so we might say that that in is on a small hillock let's make that hillock a bit bigger and move it across so we could do that we could put it on a small hillock lovely okay what else have we got um, small bare fields okay yep like that not everything's going to be lined perfectly but that's quite nice isn't it we can just put out fields it's different fields so yep so we can choose our textures of our fields that's quite nice wooden bridges yeah got to draw water underneath you've seen me draw water <laughs> let's not do that again uh oh clouds so yeah we can do layers as well um again this is not something i am very good at so uh we've got top objects foreground so can i put clouds whoops the days didn't want to do that uh how do I because that's just going to sit there that's not going to be over the top in the way that I'd want I can certainly make that oh there's there's layer I put it ah, I see right okay so on the right hand side here we can see clouds are now on layer two and those other things are elsewhere which is good they're on layer one so I can move this and I know that these clouds are on top of everything else. Okay, so I can stick those wherever I want. Um, okay, all sorts of really good stuff. Thin walls. I mean, they don't look particularly thin to me, they look huge. That's because I've got the size up. Go back to my pointer. Okay, so I could use those and uh, it's on stamps, wasn't it? There's a longer one, and I could put. I mean, that's really close up to the boundary. And that's not very realistic, um, but I can put out walls. I can do all sorts of things. So yeah, that's really nice. That's good. I'm gonna get rid of that. Let's get rid of that cloud. Yep, just hit the delete key to get rid of something I don't like. Nice and easy. So yeah, we can do that as well. That's that's good. Another style. Um, again, I don't want that. So I'm going to return to my map. So I'm going to abandon what we've done there. I'm going to create a new map. So that we looked at the fantasy regional map, which is great. Uh, the watercolor battle maps we haven't looked at. We looked at the watercolor cities free version. Um, and But we can also look at this top one here. 
and see what we can do with this. So this is this is the one that I played with before. Um, and again, I can go and look at my base colors and things like that. I've got grass of different types, and I can just slap this grass out over here. Now there's all sorts of other stamps we can use for this one. Um, Again, this whole stuff specifically for camps and castles and deserts, we don't have access to those in the free version, but we do have trees, bushes, palm trees, um, small logs, some stairs, chimneys, torches, you know, tables, all sorts of things that we've got here. Um, loads of stuff that we could we could use and do something with. So um, let's let's pick some trees. Again, it's going to randomly choose the size of our trees, which is good. Now I believe I did find um, we've got some just brighter grass. I saw somewhere that will. <laughs> Please hold. It's the first time I'm using it today. Remember, I'm doing this, so you don't have to. Um, I see, yes, you can automatically select stuff to go on the different layers from the top here. Oh, that's good. Right, I'm getting distracted. Now, I thought under here I found something. Oh, yeah, look, ruined stones, cliffs. How's that going to work? Right. Okay, so you could do something like that. Let's go back to our brush. Uh, whoops. Recently used is right here, which is nice and useful. We can come and put all of this back in here. I know, I could have just made the brush size bigger. Don't make sensible suggestions much more fun for you to laugh at my incompetence okay so we can do something like that we can add some grass up here I'm just dabbing bits here just to break up some of those edges a little bit um, yeah so it might be that this is the top of the cliff that's the bottom of the cliff um, of course we could do other things we've got that dirt dungeon ground that's just bleh, don't like that but not for above ground uh, stone walls wood wood floor just different dirt Okay, so that's useful. Not sure we would necessarily want want it. Whoops, a daisy accident. <laughs> Getting carried away with the clicking. Oh, carried away with the clicking. So we can just break up some of that dirt a bit. Okay, so brilliant. Okay, so we've got a really really simple map here. Uh, but let's go to the grid tool. So on the left-hand side, we can go to the grid tool here, uh, click Show Grid, and you can see it's automatically got a grid for this. So if we assume these are five by five, we can just look at how many columns there are. So if we put the columns up, see how small they get. Put it down, see how big they get. So we can choose for this battle map, if you like, um, where we want it. So let's go with 50. We can have about that size. Um, which one's opacity? Is it this one? Yep, so we can turn the opacity down so we can still just about see the grid lines, but they're not, you know, because if we stick it up like this, that's way intrusive. That's, we probably don't want that. Remember, our tokens are going to lock to our grid for us, so we don't need to be able to see the grid particularly well. We need to see it well enough that the characters, the players rather, can make judge some distances. 
All right, so I'm happy with that. So we can just use this one if we want to. Uh, so at the bottom left, uh, let's see if there's anything else we want to add on first. Um, so you know, things like we could put the campfire in. But <laughs> the problem with that is that that then becomes static on the map. What if they move their campfire? What if they decide that they don't want to camp right there? You're going to say to them as a DM that they have found a suitable place to set up camp and you can bring the map up and then they might go, oh yeah, no, we'll move it over there. We want to be up against a rock wall or we don't want to be up against a rock wall. Um, so it might be that actually they define where they want. It's the same with we've got things like bed rolls, although we haven't got access to it. It's like, yeah, we can slap down bed rolls. We can slap down small logs for them to sit on and all of those things and set up the campsite. But guaranteed, whatever you choose to do, they will say, oh, but that's not where I would want it. Um, so I want to just have a plain map with nothing on it. And then one of the next videos, maybe not the next one, but one of the ones we're going to do shortly in the future is look at tiles within Foundry where we can slap those assets down um, as we go. Uh, I think for me, that's going to work better. OK, so coming out of there, um, I'm going to say that I'm happy with this as a base map. Uh, I might stick a few more trees on, do you think? Yeah, stick a few more trees on. It's a little bit exposed at the moment. Uh, there's nothing wrong with being exposed. Except if it was too open, too exposed, why would you camp there? I wouldn't camp there. <laughs> I want uh, I want to make sure that there's routes that I can escape from. Um, you know, I've got room to actually camp out without being directly under the trees. Um, if I can, you want to be in a clearing. The closer those trees are, the easier it is for things to sneak up on you. So I might be picking this now. Guaranteed, one party is going to go. Oh, how can we can we scale these rocks here and camp at the top? Yeah, of course they can if that's what they want to. Or maybe they start. Maybe they're actually camping at the top. Yeah, it's up to you. Whatever. Okay, let's say I'm happy with this. So I'm going to go to the bottom left here where we've got this little save icon and I can call this. So I'm going to call this uh, campsite, uh, campsite cliffside. Okay, it's just going to take a few minutes to save that. Now it's not, it's not exporting it. So this is important. In fact, I've saved it. I can't actually access it yet. Just give it a moment. Right, so it is now saved. Uh, top left, I believe it is, under this little um, the burger icon. You can see I can save it. I can resize it. I can export as image. So this is what I want to do. Bosch It's going to show me what it's exporting. Um, it says there's an HD export that's experimental. I don't think I need that. I'm just going to hit the save image. And you can see straight away downloads. I've now got my uh, my cliffside one as well. Uh, and as you can see, it's asking you to subscribe if you want to. OK, so that's it for this video. Um, just thought I would show you that. So that's incarnate. Uh, we're really useful and if you're serious about making your own maps and things um, it's probably worth paying out for incarnate for the uh, for the pro version to get access to all those other tools again I'm really not very good at these sorts of things um, I'm much more uh, let somebody else do the work and I will um, I will borrow their work and credit them where necessary um, but even I as a total Muppet with this stuff have managed to produce a couple of different maps in fact, can I go back to return to my maps? Let me show you the forest clearing one. Give it a moment to load. Um, so I've managed to put together two maps within about an hour. There's the other one. Nice and plain, just forest clearing, easy peasy. But like I say, it's going to be when we put them into Foundry um, that it will start to come alive and be useful for us. Thanks for watching guys, hope this has been useful. If you're using Incarnate or if you've got useful tutorials that you've seen or made yourselves, let us know. I'm happy to link better people for this kind of stuff. Take care, see you soon.